Wine beds will be off limits for teenagers and children if the Food and Drug Administration has its way. Proposed regulations made public yesterday would ban children under 18 from going to indoor tanning facilities and would require adult customers to sign strongly worded new consent forms every six months. The FDA says tanning beds and sun lamps can cause skin cancer, burns, and eye damage. So joining us now in studio for more on the FDA's new regulations for indoor tanning and other related risk is Dr. Melanie Palm. It's nice to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. This is this is really something I would imagine that you're strongly in favor of because we're seeing more and more kids develop melanoma earlier in life. Absolutely. You know, I just took a melanoma out of um, a young person, a young dad last week, and I just diagnosed two pre-melanomas this week. So it's something that I think we're seeing at almost epidemic proportions, and we really counsel patients about while we're doing our full skin exam checks. It's end of year. A lot of people are doing that. So dermatologists Dermatologists across the country are very excited at this proposed rule. Why do you think it's taken this long to make this determination? I know it's really interesting. You know, it's been since 1985 that they've actually made some sort of amendment for indoor tanning. I think it's finally sort of taken course. You know, the 42 states already have regulations on indoor tanning. I think there's been a lot of pressure from organizations. You know, one in five of us is going to get skin cancer, and it's been proven that non-melanoma skin cancers and melanoma and cataracts are related to UV indoor tanning exposure. So I think that there's just such a proof of evidence that there's a relation to this. Um, the World Health Organization classifies indoor tanning as a carcinogen. And so now I think we're seeing some of those steps come into play and we're very excited. FDA may um, has this proposed rule and may actually make this a more permanent one. Yeah, it's kind of surprising because we've seen them take little steps, you know, the mm -hmm. warnings on the tanning beds that were required, and then mm -hmm. now we're hearing from, you know, the Academy of Dermatology that 59% of indoor tanners actually are more likely to develop melanoma than non-tanners. So it's, the, the data is kind of overwhelming. Yeah, and I think we've been, you know, I, I'm very passionate about it and I speak about it all the time. So I think, um, it, you know, there's been more meta-analysis, so meaning looking at large studies, putting all of that data together, and it's just so overwhelming. So yes, one exposure in an indoor tanning bed increases your risk of developing melanoma by 59%. And when you do it every year, it increases that even further. You mentioned 42 states have some regulation. Mm -hmm. Where are we in California with that? Uh, where do we stand? So we do have age restrictions right now. So I think the federal government would sort of be following suit with what we've done as well as others. You know, I, I, I uh, wrote something for the Skin Cancer Foundation saying that I got a brochure on my own practice doorstep talking about the benefits of indoor tanning even in the past year. And benefits. to me, yeah, and so I think there's a lot of miseducation going on to the public. But, you know, when the federal drug administration has looked at something you know they really look at it carefully there's a 90-day proposed rule where the public can weigh in so I really encourage patients especially if they've been touched by skin cancer to go on to the FDA website and actually comment to make sure this is a permanent change yeah what do you say to some of those myths that are out there you know oh well I needed to develop a base tan so I didn't burn when I went on my vacation I mean you hear these sure. comments over and over again what do you say to, to that I love for people to love the skin they're in I know we live in San Diego. I go hiking, I go cycling, but I'm really responsible about things, you know, using clothing, using appropriate sunscreen, doing it during times of day, which makes sense, not at high noon. Um, so, you know, there is no such thing as a base tan, and we really need vitamin D just from sun exposure. It's a small amount that you need. You know, we really like diet and supplementation as dermatologists. Definitely the benefits outweigh the risks in right. terms of getting a tan. So the proposal would ban it for those under 18. Just it would. all out ban it. Exactly. For those over 18, for adults, what, how is it going to, how's that going to work? You have to sign something? Yeah, interesting. I mean, it's more so, you know, even more so than the cigarette packets that we see. So the first time you go into a tanning salon, you would actually have to sign something that's a risk acknowledgement form that would talk about the risks of developing a skin cancer, the risks to your eyes, and then every six months thereafter you'd have to re-sign that. Just a little reminder of yeah. the, the risk factors there. Mm -hmm. How scary. soon? How soon do you think this, if it goes through the 90 days? And so there's 90 days, you know, and then I, I 
With other rules, I think up to two years they can debate things. So, you know, the FDA really wants to see what the public feedback has to say. And then based on that feedback and what they know out into the, in the scientific literature, they'll make a very good, astute sort of base. And I, I, I hope that that decision is actually making this proposed rule permanent. You've waited since 1985, I guess, I a couple know. more years. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll throw a little party. Okay, Doc. Thank you Dr. Very Melanie Tom, thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate